So there is a potential issue when accessing children objects using dot notation. And that issue is when we have a naming conflict where the object we are trying to access matches the name of a property. So let me give you an example. Right here we have our base plate and we have this can touch object right here. So if I want to access that, I might do something like print workspace.baseplate.canTouch. And we'll get the value of it because it's a, it's a Boolean value. If we run this code, we get an error. It says attempt to index Boolean with value. And that's because can touch is actually also a property of base parts. So if we go down here, we see can touch the property. So when we use dot notation, it tries to access the properties of the object first. And if that property doesn't exist, then it tries to find a child with that name. And that's what's happening here. Base plate can touch is looking for properties first, finds it, returns a Boolean value that is can touch, and then we try to do dot value on it, which obviously fails. So we were unable to actually get our can touch object. Some people might say, well, just don't name things the same as the properties. But we have a severe limitation here. We don't know what the future holds, right? So the way Roblox works is when they add things into the engine, our games just update with it, right? We have no say in that. We can't block our game to a specific Roblox engine version. It's always updating with the engine. With that comes new properties, new properties, new names. There's a potential that Roblox might add a property with a name that matches an object that you already have in an existing game. And if you're using dot notation to access that object, it might just break due to an update. So for instance, can touch was added in January, 2021. So that was just a couple years ago. Any time before that, if you had an object called can touch, you would have thought that was fine. But then all of a sudden Roblox adds this as a property and your code breaks. So the question is, how, how can we prevent this? Well, I guess, first of all, I would argue it's probably Roblox's responsibility to give us a tool to do this properly. Right? We shouldn't have to create a bunch of code just to get around this problem. But there are a couple things we can do right off the bat. So first of all, we can use find first child. And if we do that, our code will work. There is a small limitation though to this, and that is that find first child will just return nil if it didn't find anything. This is a safe method to access objects that might be children of an object, but it doesn't require that object to exist. And the reason that's a problem is that as soon as you get a nil value back for something that you expected to exist, you might end up passing that nil value around and it might blow up down the line and it's hard to kind of track down. This kind of gets into the same argument as to why nil values are kind of incredibly dangerous in the programming world and why they shouldn't exist. I'm not going to get into that, but it's in the same realm of, of reasoning here. And so we need to fix this so that it's a little safer for us to use. Find first child is great. It's going to do what we need here. But what if we made a typo? For instance, let's try to get the texture object instead. Uh, right now that works just fine, texture. But what if we try to access texture one? Well, it's just gonna print nil. That seems fine at first, but let's say we're trying to uh, use that as a variable. We pass around texture to do something, some non-existent function, and do something takes a texture and it passes that texture to something else. And then somewhere down the line, uh, we try to access it. So we might do texture dot, you know, texture ID or whatever. I guess texture is just the property, right? We might end up trying to do something like that. Now it blows up with us. We see what? Attempt to index nil with texture. And we go back to this and we see that, you know, maybe we find out texture is nil and we have to trace it back to where did texture come from. And in a lot of code bases that can be really complicated because it may have been passed around through whole systems. Uh, and then now it's just dying on you. So it is ideal for this to fail early, fail fast, so that we immediately know, oh, it failed to find the texture. So that's the nice thing about dot notation is that if we did texture one, it would throw an error for us. We see the error, it's not a valid member of parts. So that's, that's nice. So we want something that kind of contains both of these benefits. We wanna be able to throw an error if the object is not found, but we don't wanna use dot notation 
because of the possibility of a future or current property name conflict. So the way we can fix this is by making a little module that I've already wrote called find. So all this does is it takes a parent instance where we're gonna start looking for the instance. And then it also takes a path with a forward slash delimited path here, right? And so we just break that path up based on the slashes in it. So we get each part of the path and then we scan through and find each child within that. And if it ever fails to find one of the children, it will throw an error with a good message to help us understand what happened. So let's see how to use that. I'll import the find module. And now we're gonna do find workspace, sorry, find.path base plate slash texture. So now that'll work as expected. We got the texture just fine. Same thing if we want to do the can touch object now, now we can safely get that. So now that should print out false, that's the value of it. And if I make a typo in one of these things, for instance, if I do texture one, we're gonna get an error and it's gonna say, fail to find texture one and workspace.base plate. Gives us the full path, it gives us where the error happened, line five, so we can go to it quickly, figure out what happened and fix it here. So instead of it ending up being a nil value being passed around as such, we quickly fail, figure out what went wrong and continue on with life.